exactly Super Tuesday, but it was the biggest primary day left on the midterm calendar. Voters turned out in five U.S. states yesterday, Washington, Arizona, Kansas, Missouri and Michigan. Some of these results pointing to a major shift on the right. But let's start, first of all, in Kansas. That was Kansas delivering a resounding defeat to those who are trying to eliminate state protections for abortion. It's the first time since Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court that voters have had a vote on the issue. And it wasn't even close. With 98% of the vote counted, 59% of people voting to preserve abortion rights. Currently, abortion is banned or severely limited in 12 states. Another 10 are moving in the same direction. So this result a landslide victory in a conservative red state is a very big deal. Well, joining us tonight is the pollster and political consultant, uh, Frank Luns. Frank, um, I said that if you are a Republican strategist this morning, waking up to this, this is, well, this is a huge wake-up call, isn't it? Uh, it is, and it, I'm sure it surprised a lot of people. But the events of last night are significant, that Donald Trump is still demonstrating considerable support within the GOP across the country that there is a potential divide between economic conservatives and social conservatives. But I want to emphasize that these are still primaries. This is just Republicans or Republican uh, focused elections. And this is not the entire electorate. And we're going to have a very high turnout that Americans are paying attention to what's going on in Washington. They're voting, they're participating. And I'm expecting the last 100 days before the midterms to be one of the most negative periods in modern American politics. A lot of people are pretty angry about the way the shape of the country right now and where policies and politics and the economy is headed. And I think we're going to have a problem going forward. But, sorry, just on this issue of Kansas, though, it wasn't just Republicans that were voting, was it? No, it was, uh, it was uh, statewide. Yeah, that was but, statewide. OK, just wanted to be clear on that. I mean, on, on that issue of abortion within Kansas, I take your, your, your wider point about, about the, uh, the primary races across the country, but on this issue of, of abortion within Kansas, uh, I think for the Republican Party, the, the issue has been driven by a small minority, a very wealthy minority, and I wonder whether the Republican Party, the GOP, look at this result in Kansas and think, hang on, when it comes to the congressional races in in autumn, in November, we can't take things for granted if people are going to campaign on this issue. Oh, but the fact is, and this is a fact, the abortion issue is the number one issue for 8% across the country. Inflation is the number one issue for 33% across the country. So if the campaign, if the Democrats decide to make this a campaign about abortion, they'll win a couple of seats in suburban, wealthier suburban districts, and they'll lose the country that I recognize that a lot of people are focused because of the, of the Supreme Court decision. But in the end, as a pollster, my job is to keep emphasizing where the issues are, where the priorities are, where the American people are. And they're far more focused on affordability than they are on the vote of Kansas. It's a really good point. I'm not giving a partisan point of view here. I'm speaking from the data. And Kansas, come on, let's be candid. Kansas is not America. I realize that, that there's a famous book with a play in Kansas, but that's one segment of society. The fact is, the Republicans and Democrats are basically tied in the generic ballot that most observers, objective observers, believe that the Republicans will win the House, the Democrats will keep the Senate, that the polling, as you look towards 2024, between Trump and Biden are, are evenly divided, and that the results and what we're getting right now is a country that is completely polarized. And I, I say this, and I apologize for interrupting, but I'm very concerned that British audiences, American audiences, will get a misread of this. There's a reason why Joe Biden is the most unpopular president since Harry Truman. And most, most viewers weren't even alive when Truman was president. There's a reason why Congress is the most unpopular Congress ever, that the public is fed up with conversations about extremism and wants the elected officials to get something done. They need to be able to afford their food. They need to be able to afford their fuel. You're going through the same thing in the UK. And the fact is that you dumped your prime minister mm. in frustration. So let's keep this as it really is, not as we want it to be, 
and stop accusing the Republicans of being so extreme because right now they're going to beat your Democrats if you're not careful. I mean, in the, in the governor candidate, um, so the, the category in Arizona last night, Frank, we had Kerry Lake, uh, who said even before the result had come in that she wasn't going to accept it if she lost. And, and she actually, she only got across the line because they started counting late ballots. I mean, look at the irony in that. But uh, we have, a, we have a, secretary, a guy running for Secretary of State who is a, a denier of the 2020 election, who would be in charge perhaps of the 2024 election. I mean, that's like putting the fox in charge of the penthouse. I mean, it, it is extraordinary to look at from this side of the pond. I realize that. And Trump, all four years of Donald Trump was extraordinary and exceptional for not just your audiences, but for all of Western Europe, for the world, in fact. Uh, and it's a problem for the Republican Party. I think Ron is absolutely correct that there are two Republican parties now. There's the Trump Party, which which supports some issues and certainly carries himself very differently than the party of Ronald Reagan, who once said the 11th commandment is thou shalt not attack other Republicans. You are correct in your analysis. Trump continues to dominate the Republican Party, not everywhere, but more than half the elections that he's been involved in, he has won. In fact, he's got about a 90 percent success rate in primaries but that is different from the American people. That's strictly the Republican primaries. The elections in November are about 98 days away, 99 days away. And I think that you are continuing to see a level of anger, a level of frustration, and a level of fear that prices are so high that shortages are really starting to have an impact, that crime has become very random, that our borders, that we've lost control. And what you're seeing on the Republican side is a greater reaction of movement towards more, uh, I'm gonna use the language of your guest before, of a more extreme approach. But make no mistake, the people in the center are almost as fed up, almost as frustrated, and almost as afraid. So to me, last night was about Donald Trump. But as we move towards November, Republicans will rise and fall based on their own record and based on the record of Joe Biden and congressional Democrats. It will not be because of Donald Trump. Frank, just a, a final one. I, I mentioned of the 10 Republicans who impeached Donald Trump, two have lost their seats. Four others have voted not to run. And then we've got Liz Cheney, who we think will lose her seat in Wyoming. So, I mean, as Peter Meyer says, it was probably the wrong political decision, but he stands by it. All of them look as if they're, they're going to be in political trouble. Uh, yes, but it was explained to me by one of these individuals that we ask American men and women to put their lives on the line every single day for the country, for the democracy, for the Constitution, and they're willing to give their life to keep America strong and safe and healthy, that these elected officials have to be willing to give up their careers to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not making a judgment on the, on the decision of impeachment, but I do applaud congressmen like, like Peter Meyer for being willing to do that, for being willing to speak up and speak out, knowing that they will be, that, that their whole future is in jeopardy. Good for them. We need more people like that. You in the UK and us in the US. People who stand for principle, not just for politics. Frank Lance, always good to get your thoughts on the programme. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you.